in the previous lecture i told you how you we tailor made the beams inside the reactor and how we can transport the beams outside the reactor and even outside the reactor hall or the target hall using guides so this is about uh, neutron transport from the core and also neutron transport to far away places this lecture we will be discussing the various components like filters and the collimators that we use in the beam line and also the kind of monochromators we use in tailoring the neutron beam this is the next next part of the lecture where the beam tailoring with respect to wavelength and with respect to removal of unwanted components are concerned so i have discussed with you in the previous lecture up to beam lines and now we will be talking about in pile collimators filters solar collimators and monochromators and at the end most importantly uh, in i will take one lecture on neutron detectors and monitors that are used at various sources so so the thing is that in case of neutrons uh, as i am harping again and again that lots of radiation it comes out from the reactor or the target and the desirable thermal or cold neutrons with which we want to do the experiments are always accompanied by a lot of undesirable fast neutrons and gamma rays and we need to cut them down even we need to cut down the neutrons because if i have neutrons which is not so harmful to health but it can be harmful so far as the experiment is concerned because it will increase the background in the experimental hall the beam needs to be tailored properly even before it reaches a monochromator and also be tailored after the monochromator before it reaches the sample so before it a beam reaches the mono monochromator at the center of the monochromator drum which i showed you earlier i'll show you later also in pile collimators are used to cut down and tailor made the beam it filters the beam path beam so that unwanted and undesirable components of the beam can be removed so now we are here so this is the let me say this is the beam path the core is somewhere here where the meter and there is a large monochromator drum it's a drum because it needs to be rotated and at the center there is a monochromator monochromator means it reflects the neutron beam and chooses the mono a monochromatic wavelength because in a scattering we need a direction and energy defined so but before it reaches the monochromator inside the beam also inside the beam path because this beam lines are around 100 mm i mentioned to you earlier or 300 mm diameter so it's a large beam path you can keep them open also if required we should have the facility to close down the beam because sometimes we might have to go approach this path and this is directly open to the reactor core and very heavy radiations can come so we should have some way of cutting down the beam so all these come inside the beam path the the inner gate and what is known as in pile collimators so and also after we have uh, removed the harmful radiation we also need to filter the filters in the beam path to take out the undesirable components of neutron so moreover neutron flux being low so we need to have a large beam size unlike uh, this is the biggest difference i can tell you physically 
For example, when you are working in a synchrotron source, the synchrotron radiation which is coming from an accelerating electron beam is highly, what should I say, highly directional. Few micron sized beams come out and of course it needs to be monochromatized but you can compare this with a neutron flux of 10 to the power 14 neutrons per centimeter square per second in the core, it has come down to 10 to the power 8 or 10 to the 7 neutrons per centimeter square per second at the beam hole mouth. And then we normally in neutrons, in general, we can make it a rule of thumb that we will be using a large beam, as large as 5 centimeter by 5 centimeter. So the neutron beam is first cut down using an in-pile collimator in the beam path. That means in pile, the name itself indicates that it is inside the pile. That means it is inside the biological shielding and inserted in the biological shielding so that we take out only that part of the beam, that size of beam which is desirable. Rest all we try to cut down right inside the beam tube. So this collimator is made with neutron absorbing materials. It can be paraffin wood and gamma absorbing materials like lead encased in steel or even steel itself with a large opening. Large opening because we need to have at least 5 cm by 5 cm beams in a reactor, typical. It can be slightly smaller in a reactor with a higher flux but it can be of the order of centimeter square. And there is a shutter in the beam path to close the beam. So I show a schematic of a beam line. So far I have showed you the beam line just as an opening, uh, rather a hole going all the way up to the core. But now in details I show you that this, this uh, beam has got an inner gate. This inner gate can be closed when wished so that the beam does not come out and we can approach the experimental spaces. There is a collimator. This is an in-pile collimator, that orange color. And then there is an outer gate. That means right at the beam hole mouth, we have a gate. That also can be closed. There is a shutter for that. And then we have something called a sample manipulator. I don't want to get into that. And detector. This is taken for a neutron imaging beam. So this part you need not bother. But I just want you to concentrate on the beam geometry that the beam comes out through this we have inner gate we have got a collimator and you have got an outer gate so the in pile collimator is somewhat as i showed you in this sketch uh, here actually it it is like a cone actually you can even use a conical in pile filter as i show you here this is schematic but basically often we don't do like this because it's easy to make cylindrical objects and it is as the in pile collimator may look as I show you here and often so neutron we can use neutron filters inside the beam line filter materials are something which will remove gamma rays from the neutron path because gamma rays are extremely harmful uh, for human health and we need to cut them down to allowable level before we start even uh, tailoring the beam. So we can use uh, gamma ray absorbers but at the same time these absorbers should be such that they allow the desirable neutrons to pass through. So how do we have this dual nature that means it will allow me to take out the thermal neutron at the same time absorb the gamma rays so we use single crystals silicon single crystals of bismuth or even sapphire the because why single crystals because Because if I put a filter in the beam path, 
now there is neutron which is trying to pass through and there is gamma ray which is going to pass through now if the absorption coefficient is sigma for gamma i can write it as e to the power minus mu linear absorption coefficient and t sorry so it is a linear absorption coefficient and the thickness of the radiation that is apart from there is something called a built up factor because this is true for pinhole geometry this is not a pinhole geometry along with that the neutron is going to pass through now in case of single crystals thing is that that means i can say if this has got planes let us say it might have planes oriented in this direction but only these planes are there so if that happens then from the neutron beam possibly some lambda will be scattered out by this filter but others will not get bragg scattered will not get bragg scattered scattered and will pass through what happens in case of powder if i have a powder one then for the same geometry in case of a powder one i can have beams oriented like this like this maybe like this we have all possible orientations in the beam path and lot of neutrons lots of neutrons of neutrons neutrons will be scattered out that is undesirable we want to do the job using a monochromator sometimes we also use filters i'll come to that we don't want that that's why mostly we use single crystal filters single crystal and to stop gamma rays we know high z materials are desirable so we use bismuth single crystals we can use silicon single crystals we can also use alumina for fast neutrons so alumina means this is sapphire so these are the single crystal filters that we use uh, even, and i can tell you that in some energies the transmissions they have been measured can be as good as 80% with the first neutron and ga gamma rays down by several order magnitude lower so the desirable thermal neutron and fast neutrons uh, sorry fast neutrons and gamma rays will be cut down and 80% of the thermal neutrons will pass through so we'll have a rather clean beam beam after the filter i just show you some of the things which i proposed this is a proposed beam in a dalat reactor vietnam so the, here they have talked about a silicon single crystal filter in their beam path this is an imaging beam path and uh, this the, so in the beam path they put bismuth to remove gamma rays so, uh, i just show you the transmission the these are all published ones uh, you can see that uh, uh, especially for silicon single crystal um, for various thicknesses 5 10 20 cm but the fact that some energies at some energies at the center of this plot the transmission is as large as almost uh, 70 to 80% the so some energy the transmission is very large similarly for sapphire you can see the transmission for longer wavelength neutron is large it is almost 80% but for short wavelength neutrons it is very low so sapphire can cut down the fast neutrons at the same time it can allow the thermal neutrons preferably to pass through and they are routinely used as filters in neutron beam experiments silicon single crystal bismuth single crystal and sapphire sometimes we can also use the same property of bragg scattering for some of the powder crystals powder crystals comprise of many crystallites small crystallites so in case of beryllium i am just showing you the schematic plot you can see that the transmission drastically the the cross section drastically falls beyond 4 angstrom and below 4 angstrom there is a very large cross section this is scattering cross section basically it goes to bracks through bracks scattering so what i mean to say 
that when I use beryllium powder, powder, 2D sine theta equal to n lambda. So you have, if you have a beam, then you have all possible orientations of around the beam of various various orientations of planes. So lots of lambda will be thrown out because of Bragg scattering. Bragg scattering is very strong. So it will throw out the wavelengths uh, by Bragg scattering. But once, you know, because 2D sin theta n lambda, that means sin theta is, let me just take first order lambda by 2D. So when lambda becomes larger than the largest 2D in the system, they don't get scattered anymore because then it becomes greater than 1, sin theta can't be greater than 1, 90 degree. So you don't have these wavelengths lambda greater than lambda cut off. Cut off. They will not be cut off by this powder beryllium and we can use the filtered beam for further use in our experiments if the experiments demand long wavelength neutron. So let me consolidate by saying that we normally use single crystals for thermal neutron filtering that means not thermal neutron filtering rather to filter out gamma rays and fast neutrons from thermal neutrons we use a high z single crystal but sometimes if we want to cut down the thermal neutrons and enhance the cold neutrons for some experiments we can also use beryllium as a filter uh, so similarly some people have also measured the iron cutoff you can see in iron the cutoff wavelength increases slightly iron in case of iron it goes to 4 angstrom and more so if you use want to use uh, some wavelength which is greater than 6 any of these filters even if you go to 7 angstrom and more you can use a powder bismuth filter but the fact you must remember that in the maxillion that is coming from the reactor neutrons of longer wavelengths are fewer so before we use this kind of filters it is preferable or it is desirable that we have a cold neutron source in place in our reactor and in that beam path we can use a filter i'll use an example later where a beryllium oxide filter was used and a pseudo monochromatic beam was used for small angle neutron scattering in uh, Dhruva. So now question of uh, collimation of the beam. In neutron scattering we need as I told you a relatively large beam of typical centimeter square but this if I keep a 5 centimeter by 5 centimeter beam open then uh, you can see that the divergence will be uh, given by the simple geometrical value of delta x by L will be the divergence of the beam if the delta x is the opening of a collimator. Now if you have a collimator with 5 centimeter opening, 5 centimeter by 5 centimeter opening and 1 meter length, the divergence is about 3 degrees and that is too large because of the fact that if I do an experiment uh, even if a diffraction experiment first order then delta d by d is a sum of delta theta by theta and delta lambda by lambda the easiest approximation okay and then delta theta by theta if it is 3 degrees this is of no use for a diffraction experiment so we, so we have a competing interest. We need a large beam, but we need a smaller divergence. How to satisfy these two? So this is what is done by a solar collimator. So it makes a compromise between resolution and beam size. How? This is a typical design of a solar collimator. So now I will just explain to you. A solar collimator has got a rectangular cross section. Usually the neutron beams are always rectangular in our experiments 
and if it is a horizontal geometry that I am using for scattering experiment, then the resolution is determined by the resolution in the horizontal plane. And in the vertical plane, we can play, we don't have any resolution requirement if my delta theta by theta is dictated by the horizontal resolution. So now the solar collimator has a rectangular cross section and interspersed with a strong neutron absorbing material. So e, this is the collimator. This size is the desirable size, I can say 2 to 3 centimeters this height may be of the order of 10 centimeters but I can intersperse this thing with narrow so I have made this collimator using these narrow slits so it is this so now the beam size is dictated by the width and height of the collimator width is in centimeters height in centimeters and the Collimation is given by delta x, which I have defined here, which is the distance between two of such absorbing material. So these absorbing materials run all throughout the length of the collimator and actually the beam divergence is dictated by the delta x which I showed here in this diagram. And the separating foils are actually Foils or materials are made from gadolinium or cadmium and we have to take lots of pain to keep them straight, stretched so that this beam path does not get closed in the length. So typically 300 to 500 centimeter length and this is called a solar collimator. So a solar collimator with a delta x of around 1 millimeter, I said 1 millimeter, it can be even less. And 500 millimeter length, you can easily estimate the delta x by delta x by L. It can give me a collimation of 6 to 7 arc minutes. 6 to 7 arc minutes of divergence is very much commensurate with the delta lambda by lambda of few percent in a mosaic crystal. And they are matching with each other. And that is the best situation for a diffraction experiment. So this is a solar collimator. And I explained to you that solar collimator actually uh, adds, I mean, makes a, makes a gain by reducing the beam size width wise, at the same time allows the beam to be large. So this is a gain gain situation for the neutron scattering experiment and solar collimators are used in almost all beam paths where you are using a monochromatic beam. I am just showing you some photographs of this solar collimators of this company JJ X-ray and you can see this is how they look like and this solar collimator is routinely used in the neutron beam path. They come after the uh, monochromator drum and before the sample and this can reduce the div angular divergence of the beam to few arc minutes at the same time providing a large beam for use in our experiment.